I thought I'd killed the olive tree, but don't worry. The other day, Lids and I came into the kitchen and there was like a hundred leaves on the floor. And I was like, oh no, what's going on? And so we checked the soil and it was a little bit dry, could have been a little bit wetter. And so we gave it a drink and then we spoke to somebody that had quite a lot of experience with olive trees and fruit trees who just explained to us that basically, and I did do a little Google as well, I always do my Googles, that when you move trees, as I experienced with the orange trees in the basement, they can go into shock, which can cause them to lose their leaves. Also, when you change the humidity of olive trees quite drastically, this tree potentially was in a greenhouse or it was outside, probably at temperatures closer to single digits, if not, you know, zero or minus degrees. And it's coming to this kitchen, which over the past couple of weeks, when the sun's out, because of this big pane of glass, it gets to like 26 degrees in here. We have the room temperature set at around about 22. So for it to have gone from low temperatures to high temperatures and also that change in humidity probably was the reason why the leaves are falling off. But we've been looking after it. We've not fertilized it because you can't fertilize a tree when it's losing leaves. Well, you can, but we were advised not to. And Google told me not to as well because you overstimulate the roots and you can put more stress on the roots, which can actually put more stress on the tree, of course. So the idea is, is that you just water it and make sure it doesn't go dry. And we've already started to see that there is some new leaf growth. But I had a little panic. I was like, no, it's only been here for like two weeks and it's already dying. But we've got it back to life. So hopefully we'll stay on top of it. If you see in the coming weeks a very bare and empty olive tree, it's because it had a little bit of a shock from its movement and probably change in climate, humidity, etc. So don't panic, it's under control. But today the weather, and I hate to talk about the weather so much, but it really has been absolutely crazy recently. We've had snow, hailstones, it's, I mean, look at it now. It looks like a lovely summer's evening, blue sky, birds are out, lovely job. But if I was vlogging half an hour ago, it looked like we were in the mists of winter. But anyway, Lids and I are just about to go out for a walk with Porter, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna cook us chili con carne, jacket potatoes with cheese. I don't know why, I'm just in the mood for it. And I felt like it's a good dish to cook in between going out for a walk because I can stick the jacket potatoes on in the oven for an hour. We can go out, we come home, dinner's ready. Two birds, one stone, you get the gist. So I'm gonna prep the con carne now and then I'll heat that back up when we get back and the jacket potatoes are ready. I've actually been using BBC Good Food uh, for a lot of recipes recently. And I know it's quite a basic standard place to go, I guess. Um, everybody would have heard of it. I'm not teaching you anything new right now, but I have to say it's such a brilliant website. Stick in your ingredients, it'll chuck you a load of suggestions and uh, it's really easy to follow. So I have been using BBC Good Food. Couldn't recommend it highly enough. Not that I need to, because everybody knows about it already, but yeah, I didn't do that for the chili con. Oh, sorry darling, I've just elbowed Lummi. I didn't see you there. Bless her, I just put my arm down and like boshed her. Aww. Little stretch. Sorry, I lost my trailer thoughts then. Lumi being up means it's 5 p.m. She wakes up at five o'clock and has her feed and then waits for us to settle down with her. So I better get cracking because the quicker we get in that lounge. Oh, by the way, talking of sitting down and watching TV, we've not been doing lots of it because of all of the building works that have been going on, trying to catch up with everything. But last night we did sit down and watch The Dig which is a film that's currently on Netflix and it's based on a true story. It's quite slow. I wouldn't rush to go and watch it. If somebody said to me, can you suggest any films? It probably wouldn't be one of the films that I would say you really need to go and watch this film. I'm not selling it here, am I? But I quite enjoyed it and lovely ending. And I feel like it's probably a film that stuck quite true to the reality rather than dramatizing it. Um, I can imagine it was pretty much a recreation of real events as opposed to, you know, like a lot of the dramatized true story films that we're accustomed to. So I thought it was quite a nice film. You okay? Um, you do know that it's 10 to six? Yes, okay, I'm gonna get cracking. I even thought of calling you up. So Liz has just informed me that I have half an hour to cook an hours long dish, which means 
we are doing a very fast and speedy con carne. So that is the fastest chili con carne mix I've ever made. It's currently simmering in the pot behind me. Didn't have all the ingredients, so it is a little bit of a take. And I chucked in a little bit of red wine, which wasn't on the recipe list, but we had a little bit left over, so I thought we might as well use it. And... <laughs> that was the point. Oi! Quarters, yeah, you already got it. <laughs> yeah, four quarters, I didn't. Um, I'm just having a little clean down after I cook, because if you've been around here for a while, you'll know that I like to clean and cook at the same time. Oh yes you do. So that's what I'm doing. And then in about 10 minutes time, I'll add the red kidney beans and then I'll allow that to simmer for about another 10 minutes. And then that's that done. Take it off the heat, chuck the spuds into the oven for an hour. We're gonna head out for our walk and successful little plan in place. This is currently what we're looking like in here. Times bubbling away. Red kidney beans ready to go. Potatoes ready to go. They're a decent size they are, aren't they? Decent. These two ready to go for the walk. Also, I should have worn an apron. Oh, you, you, literally, you have your own apron as well. Got a little stain here. Chalk thing then is literally sent you your own. And a little apron. one there. I know, but I I wear that for barbecues. What's the difference? It's in the drawer. Yeah, I know. I should I should wear I should wear that one in the house and buy that suede leather, leather so one for yeah. the barbecue. Anyway, let's uh, I'm gonna get the table set while that simmers. Anywhere but the cat flap. <laughs> Yes, anywhere but the cat flap. 46? You're such a nightmare, Porter. Is that worth it? Is that fun for you? Concarni's not looking too bad. I'm just about to put the spuds in the oven. Dressed up, ready to go. Oh! Off. You're gonna look like one of the sheep. <laughs> I'm going to go to nuts because I can never get it on him. Do you want me to help? <laughs> <laughs> Can't get it. Out of your mouth. See, so he wants to eat it rather than wear it. <laughs> to muzzle him to get his jump from. <laughs> There he is, peekaboo. <laughs> you look like a sheep. <laughs> you look like a sheep. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. But Mummy's so embarrassing, isn't she? Just let me get your foot in, for goodness sake, so you're warm. <laughs> it's proper fight, isn't it? Once your foot's in, you can stop biting me. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate, but you don't want to see the boys out today. Oh, I think he looks adorable. Yeah, exactly. I bet that's so warm, though, and comfortable. Exactly, that's why I got it. Is that comfy, mate? There we go. Watch 
more comfortable than the other coat. Yeah, I bet that is comfy actually. Go on and give us a twirl. I'll give you a treat for being such a good boy then. Sit. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> you already did it like a good boy. Good boy. Come on then. Get your coat on. Yeah. We're going out the back? No. Okay. Good boy. It's not a dog walk, it's a walk your dog. That doesn't make sense. No. Cool story, bro. <laughs> you coming, Lummy? Got to blend in. I'm in camouflage. Oh, mountain goats. Well, I think today has to be Porter's most stubbornest, if that's a word, walk we've ever done. He just didn't want to walk, on lead that is. When he's off lead, he's fine, but on lead, sometimes, I'm telling you. He's not having it. Come on, sheepy. We're about to get wet. We are. Did you have a good walk? Hey? What's that on your bum? <laughs> And on your little chest. You're turning into a right little teenager. So we've come home. I've whacked the Konghane back on. Looking good. Texture's nice. Those potatoes look all right, not gonna lie. Bit of crunch. Oh yeah, a bit of crunch. So basically, Lydia has got on her Apple Watch the uh, Find My Phone setup, and all I hear around the house now is ding ding ding, ding ding ding. She loses her watch every second of the day. <laughs> I knew you were going to say about that. It's it, it's true. All I've, it's, the best it's about three times today I've just heard ding ding ding, it's the best ding ding ding. Ever. I don't waste time. Where have I left my phone? Swipe up, ding, tells me straight away. Yeah. The best, is, if, there, if ever there was a reason to get an Apple Watch, it's that. Find my phone. Honestly, it's the best thing ever. I, when I don't wear it, I'm like, I wish I was wearing my Apple Watch right now. Wish I knew where it was. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna get these spuds on. Lydia has been busy making this lovely tablescape today, bringing the outdoors in. And we have chili con carne jack potatoes with cheese. A bit of a sloppy dinner, but a hearty one. Mm. Right. We even managed to walk you in between it all, didn't we, mate? And now you're in bed. <laughs> he can hardly open his eyes. Mm. Bless him. courtesy of Miss Mill and Gordon over the weekend. I chucked this into the Delicates wash and Lydia put it on a cold Delicates. However, it should have gone on a Woolens and it wouldn't have shrunk. So I now have a shrunk jumper, which is one of three that have been shrunk in the last two weeks. Lydia also put a pair of my Hugo Boss trousers that I've only worn twice. They are now no longer wearable because they were dry clean only. I'm going to be honest here, I did put them in the washing basket 
Um, I had had a few drinks when I was wearing them. I chucked them in the washing basket and went to bed. I hadn't checked, probably should have checked, but I definitely would have checked before they went into the washing machine and would have seen. But hindsight is a beautiful thing. And the bottom line is I have lost a pair of Hugo Boss trousers, lost my Sandro take it easy Sunday sweater, and I've also lost a Reese polo. So sad times in the clothing department over the past couple of weeks, but I'm not gonna let it dampen my spirits. It's Monday, the sun is shining, it's also snowing and raining, and I think we had a frost last night. Weather continues in its weird and wonderful ways, but today I'm gonna get cracking, trying to see if I can get the sugar beet soil ordered um, this morning because the offices should be open. It looks like you need to order 20 tonnes, which is obviously a huge amount, but there is quite a lot of space around the garden that could do with a little bit of a level up, so I will definitely be able to lose it. And once I know when I can have that delivered, I'm gonna look at getting the rotavator and the aerator booked and hired from a local company that are hiring them out at a really fair price. Something like 77 pound for two days for each petrol tool. So I don't think that's too bad at all. That also includes the fuel as well. That's my task of the morning, as well as pushing my latest blog post on alleygordon.net. I really like this one. I've been mixing up some sort of fashion, lifestyle, but then sort of mindset blog posts. This is a mindset blog post and I do enjoy sharing these. So if you wanna go and check them out, then make sure you head over to alleygordon.net and that's the plan of my morning. And then this afternoon, I've got a meeting with the girls. I need to take Porter on a walk and I may get out in the garden and do a little bit of tidying up of that ivy once more, weather dependent. One of the perks of overcooking is you get to enjoy it for lunch the next day. So I've put some rice with the konkani today. Easy lunch, delicious lunch. Lydia, however, what are you eating? Hey, beans on toast. Cheesy beans on toast. Tomato ketchup. No, I don't have tomato ketchup. Okay. And what are you having for lunch? Porty had beef. Oh, you had beef. Beefy, beefy. Good boy. Look outside. Come on. Hey, Come on. It's a lovely day, Porter. At the minute. So you might want to go and make the most of it. Go on. Go for a wee. You like it in the sun, don't you? See you then. Is that the bum, the, the thumb that you've taken up your bum? Must have been. <laughs> it must be if he's licking it. <laughs> <laughs> he's little sausage. You love to eat a little bit of poo, don't you? You can't keep running around the front of the house, mate, and getting into the house, okay? Love it when his ears blow in the wind. Why can't you let me do this? Wait. Ferocious! Ferocious! <laughs> ferocious! You are ferocious! You are! Mummy's gonna leave you, and that means that he's gonna come back to a very excited sausage. <laughs> Make zoomies. Zoomies, zoomies. Zoomies, zoomies. You kiss your mummy. You kiss your mummy. You're not allowed to because your breath stinks. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's like a suction. Yeah. That's you. You've got like a suction mouth. Suction. Like a little suck, suck a fish. Yes. <sighs> We're dressed alike today. As always. <laughs> So the guys are currently working on the threshold into the living room, so we've given them a little bit of privacy. Also stop this little man from walking all over it. You gonna come out to the garden when I work? Oh yes. Puppy loves it when daddy's in the garden with him. Yeah, and we're gonna continue tackling the beast. I also have a little update. I managed to get six ton bags of the British sugar topsoil, which is basically the sugar beet soil that I was talking about, uh, but it's actually called British sugar topsoil, the stuff that I'm getting. And I also managed to hire the rotavator and aerator for the Thursday and Friday of this week as well. So that's fantastic because it means that all of my stuff's gonna be here 
by the end of the week I'm going to be very busy shifting that around uh, but I do have Ben and potentially Aaron coming over on Friday so they might be able to muck in and help spread a little bit of that soil around for me as well do a little bit of raking and seeding and then fingers crossed in about a month's time we'll have some good solid grass growth rather than the patty stuff in fact let me show you right so a little update you can see that we have a tiny piece of growth up here on the back not much going on at all around here you can see there's a very small a very small amount of grass growth put the camera down you can see but nothing worth talking about and then if we walk over to this side we get a little improvement so it's growing through a bit more here and then down the length you can see we're having very patchy growth come through here and it isn't doing too badly around here where I put a little bit of peat free soil down. Let's see if we're getting a bit of grief. But it's not good enough, is it, Porter? We can't have you running around on mud on wet days. Can we, boy? You are such a good little boy. You want to play fetch? How on it? It's a helicopter, mate. Come on. Come here, good boy. Good boy. That was an absolute monstrous effort right there. I've not got it all though, how annoying. As you can see, I've got the ladders pretty high. I felt relatively safe. The ladders were supported really well by the tree. The tree's super sturdy as well, so I may have looked a little bit more vulnerable than I actually was, but wow. Good effort, but we're not all the way there. Might have to get a picker up there, or a scaffold to clear out the rest of it, which is a little bit frustrating, but another great reason why you need to stay on top of your ivy, because if you don't, It'll get into that canopy and you won't be able to reach it. Come, Mr. Kenny Ken. Right, that is the ivy corrected on the tree. I say corrected, you know, removed. And I'm just coming down into the basement to put the fleeces on the orange trees because we are due to have potential frost every morning this week. Looking good out here though. Last time I did this on my channel, Lily had a little bit of trouble. Sit. We're gonna see if we have the same struggles. Easy. 
see. Put this one on. Come on then. Let's go. You are a very distinguished gentleman. Look how smart you look. I would have picked it myself. Would have made you dress like that myself, but I think it looks very comfortable and warm. I like the country attire. And you look like a sheep. Yes, you do. Are you joking me? You're asking for belly rubs after that performance. Are you joking me? Okay, I'll give you some anyway. You need a shower, mate, or a bath. Because it's been a very long time and you're very dirty. Well, I was going to say, I don't know who walked who then, but I do know who walked who. Porter walked me. I feel absolutely exhausted. He didn't go in any of the directions that I was hoping for, and he decided to stop and run away from me in the direction we had walked from multiple times. Who thought walking a dog would be so hard? We definitely need some recall lessons and we definitely need to get this boy used to walking because it wasn't even noisy where we were walking. He was just getting amongst his business. So normally I go out when Lids is there and uh, he is a lot better than that, I have to say. So I think he was abusing my inexperience. What an evening it's turned out to be. The sun is fully out. Okay, there's a few clouds, but in general, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm just looking out into the garden at the tree that I stripped the ivy off. It's looking really good, if I must say so myself. I'm not really too sure whether anybody would remember it. I mean, you only need to look to the left and the right to notice what it would have looked like before, but it looks more tree-like again. And obviously when that blossoms, it's gonna be spot on. I'm gonna have a think about this one. I think it needs to also be done. Definitely the oak tree needs to be done because that has got right up in the canopy. You can see it. That's outrageous. Porty! Hello! <laughs> hello! 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 You've been sweeping! You've been sweeping! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! No, jump, no! <laughs> <laughs> you are hide your back, don't do that. Don't do that. No, no! Maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's on spring rock. No, we'll run around, run around, we'll run around. No jumping, no, no, no. Sit, sit, good boy, good. That's it, that's it, that's it. I feel like I've got very similar control over him. Oh, really? You're not a good boy for your daddy. Well, Lily's just been to Bista and had a session of laser treatment, is that right? I've had laser and a hydrofacial, and also cool. she zapped some veins in my nose. Oh, that. interesting. Well, I need to get myself booked in because I'm not sure if any of you have noticed before, but I've got a little red mark just here, and also a little white mark, or a little white bump just here in my, I was gonna say eyelid, but it wouldn't be my eyelid, would it? because the lid would be on top. What's the bit underneath? Under eye. On my under eye. And apparently electrolysis will get rid of that. So I do need to go in and have some electrolysis just to zap that and that off. Um, and then start wearing SPF, <laughs> which I do do. But when I was younger, I didn't do it as much. In fact, I was terrible. I used to put oil on. But yeah, so I need to go and see them as well. And I think I'm also going to be going into the chamber there, the oxygen chamber, which I'm actually quite looking forward to. It's supposed to be amazing for recovery. It's got loads of other benefits as well. So I'll probably talk to you about that in the future. But I'm gonna stop rambling because I'm gonna get cooking dinner. We have some food in the fridge that needs to be cooked and I'm gonna cook it. I need to get stuff out of the car. Okay, ooh, shall I show up my video? Um, okay. Really? Mm -hmm. New console table, let's go. Is that everything? Yeah. You just do the boot. 
Yeah. Lovely. Question time. I need the worksheets. Do you want miso aubergines, cocoa nutty Caribbean style soup, or chickpea earth bowl? The earth bowl looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that looks lovely. What um, do you fancy though? I'm not really I'm not really a soup for dinner kind of person hugely. The miso aubergine looks lovely. What do you fancy? Does it have a number on it? The one you want? 21. Yeah, it's 21. Um, I'm happy to have that, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Jobs are good and check we've got all we need. Couscous, aubergine, tomatoes, yeah, spice, chickpeas, flake, almonds, fresh herbs, chopped tomatoes and honey. Well, after all that cheffery, we have the result, which is actually lovely because it's something that I would never have cooked off my own back. I wouldn't have known how to have done it. Yeah. It's actually really nice. Yeah. And it's full of loads of goodness. So I'm going to enjoy that. I hope you enjoy it too. You've opted for no cherry tomatoes, mm. but mm. I've gone for it. And basically it's couscous, aubergines, chickpeas in a tomato sauce with yogurt and mint with almonds avocado. and avocado. This is delicious. The aubergine's got honey dressing on it, and that tastes delicious, because I did have a little nibble. <laughs> this is really lovely. Is it? Yeah. Good. And you're so right, we would never have cooked this. Never have cooked it. Took half an hour. Yeah. And... It's delicious. I'm glad to hear it. Mm. Well, it's 10 past nine, so Lids and I are gonna shut up shop for the evening, because we had a very early start today. We're slowly trying to push our mornings earlier and earlier as the days go on after the clocks have set back. We're just doing it very controllably. Yeah, not putting too much pressure on it, but we're getting up earlier. And this morning, I think probably after a weekend, having a few drinks as well, it felt a little bit harder getting up, but we did it. And so we're gonna go to bed a little bit earlier tonight and try and do the same again tomorrow and hopefully get into that routine because waking up to sunrise is one of the most beautiful things. It is literally a gift if you wake up to sunrise and uh, certainly looking through the woodlands in the garden as well where the sun kind of goes through all of the trees it's just phenomenal so one of my favorite things actually is when we're coming into autumn and we start getting the misty mornings and the sun is rising and it just looks so cinematic and atmospheric in the woodlands uh, i love that but we're a long way away from that so i don't know why i'm thinking of that right now but anyway i'm gonna go to bed and uh, i'm gonna wrap this video up so i hope you did enjoy it and on the next one, we're gonna be getting very, very busy in the garden because we've got the rotavator, the soil, and the air raids coming. So it's gonna be a busy day, but I'll vlog it as always. And you're just watching me, like a hawk, waiting for me to come to bed. So yeah, anyway, take care and we'll see you soon. Peace.